Hey guys, okay, this is another Stokes theorem problem. So this is problem 27 from chapter two. Uh, so you're given a vector function and then it wants you to find uh, the integral of f dot dl around the contour. So we have a little line kind of going all the way around. So this is the direction of our contour or our dl. Um, and it has the direction in the photo there. Then for the second part, it asks us to find the curl or the del operator cross f. Um, and then it wants you to evaluate the integral of the curl dot ds over the shaded area uh, and then compare that with part a. So because of the Stokes theorem, we would assume that part a would equal to the answer for part c. It just sort of broke up the, the steps that you do that in. So this video, we're going to do part a. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our figure here and we're going to break it up into four pieces. So we have this piece here, this piece here, this piece here this piece here. So A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A. Uh, just be very careful with those directions there too. Um, so Stokes theorem tells us that the, um, so this A dot DL or the um, line integral around a vector loop is equal to the, f the flux of the curl uh, through a surface. So we're just trying to find the, um, this first part here, this A dot DL. So we're taking our loop uh, okay, so we're breaking our problem here. I did some kind of like pre-writing out here. So first things first, we need to find our DL for each of these sides here. So we're working in cylindrical coordinates uh, given by this problem. So they give us cylindrical coordinates. Um, so this is a general DL. So if you're kind of like a little stuck on where to get started for certain coordinate systems, I have a, um, these are just down here. Uh, in this sheet here, if you go down to the bottom for Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical, there is a general DL expression uh, for each of the coordinate systems, as well as general DS and DV expressions, if you feel like you're getting lost here. Um, you do need to know how to like set them up and what they mean, so this won't really like get you out of hot water. You can't just use it um, without uh, really fully understanding it, but just, you know. Uh, okay, so we, for our first path, we're looking at AB, right? So we're going from A to B. Um, our change is going to be uh, in the phi hat direction. So our r hat direction for our cylindrical coordinate system is pointing out from the radius of the cylinder. And our phi hat direction is in the direction that the phi angle kind of sweeps the radius out. So um, yeah, A to B, we have this phi change here. So we're, we're looking to go in the phi hat direction, right? So we're looking to go in the direction that this angle sweeps. So we're gonna look at the phi hat portion of this DL expression. So we want this R D phi. And R D phi is, um, uh, if you measure R times phi, it's actually equal to the arc length. So it's like this, this length here. Uh, so that's kind of um, what we're interested in with our, our differential line. So that's why the math works out that way, but um, we're just kind of taking it um, at face value here. Okay, so let's set this up. So we need our f dot dl. So we have our dl. Um, we're in the phi direction. So this is this is the dl that we want because we're moving in the phi direction and we're looking at the um, arc length here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and set up our vector. So we have this f, um, and then we have this dl. And. Oh, Wrong thing copied, and then we have this DL. I hope, anyways. Okay, and uh, we are uh, dotting these guys together because they both have directions. They are vectors, um, and we'll be here. Okay, so first things first. So we're looking at path AB. So we know that R equals one on this path. Uh, so R is equal to one, and that phi goes from zero to pi over two for that angle. So we're going to plug in first half, just r equals 1 uh, over here, and r equals 1. And we're integrating, well, we'll see what we're integrating with respect to, but we have our d phi, so we're integrating with respect to phi. So those will be our bounds. OK, um, so let's cancel out our components. So r hat dot phi hat equals 0. When you're dotting two perpendicular vectors together, it equals 0. So if you look at the picture, r hat and phi hat are perpendicular. They're also directional unit vectors. Uh, okay, phi hat dot phi hat is equal to one. Uh, just if you dot two of the same directional unit vectors together, you're gonna get one. Um, okay, now let's simplify out here. So we have five sine of phi. I'm sorry, we're getting rid of this term here. That one drops out. 
Okay, so we have an integral, um, and it looks like we're just keeping cosine of phi uh, and then d phi. So, okay, so that was pretty simple. We canceled out a lot of things there. So now we need our bounds. Um, so when we're looking at our bounds, we need to take one thing into account here. Our bottom bound will always be where this line starts, and then our top bound will be where this the contour line ends. So our bottom bound for the contour bound, contour line is zero, and our top bound is pi over two because we're we're looking at phi for our d phi. Okay, so we're going from zero pi over two, and then if we just plug that in, we integrate and we get sine of phi from zero to pi over two, and that is just equal to one minus zero, which is equal to one. So that's our first piece. Okay, so moving on to our second piece. So we're gonna look at CD right away, just because it's similar. Um, so path CD in our figure here. So paying attention to our line here, we're going from C to D here. So we're going from pi over two to zero for, for our phi direction. Okay, so let's, let's set things up here. Okay. So notice our DL is the same for the same reasons here. Wow, my copy is not looking so well, is it? Copy and paste. Okay. Uh, equals. Let's see D here. Uh, so our R value here is 2. Because at the top of the circle, our R is equal to 2. So that's the second radius that we're just given by the problem. Um, so we're going to set R equals 2 for these guys here. Um, and then we're dotting with our DL here, dot. And we have this R, D, V, V, N. Okay, so let's go ahead and dot those. So let's look at which uh, unit vectors cancel first. Uh, always a good practice. Hat dot phi hat, so for the same reasons, is equal to zero. And this one is phi hat dot phi hat, which is equal to one. Um, so we're just keeping this piece and then our um, this second piece here for DL. Okay, so our integral is going to turn into um, R squared. So R squared is, we can go ahead and let's cancel that out right away, so, or like solve it out, so four. So we're just plugging in two over here. Four cosine of phi, uh, and phi hat dot phi hat is one, divided by um, two d phi. So we just, oh, we also plugged in our R over here, equals two. So let's go ahead and finish the rest of that. So what are our bounds here? Well, like I said before, the direction is important. So we are going from zero to pi over two, but because of our, our the direction of our DL, we're actually going from pi over two at the bottom bound to zero at the top bound. So the direction of that arrow is really important. Um, so pi over two at our bottom bound and zero at our top, okay? Um, so we have eight cosine of phi d phi, uh, so very similar here, sine of phi from uh, 0 to pi over 2, and that's going to just be, oh sorry, with that 8 there, and that's just going to end up being equal to uh, negative 1 times 8, or 0 minus 1 times, so negative 8 for that part right there, okay? Um, all right, so we did the two internal and external kind of um, arc lengths there, so let's do the sides, the side radiuses. So we did this guy and this guy, so now we're going to look at these two on the sides. Um, so for our DL, we need the vector direction for the, the pieces on the sides, and that's going to be R hat, right? Because these are going in the in the R hat direction, right? For the for our um, cylindrical coordinate system, this is pointing out or pointing in in the direction of R, so it's positive or negative r hat, we're not, we're just going to do positive r hat for both because we're looking at our direction in terms of the bounds. Um, so we're just going to take r hat here. So that's why we don't need to use negatives for our bounds here because we're taking them into account when we are integrating. Okay, so the integral from b to c, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy again. Okay. And we're going to multiply that by dr r hat. So step one, uh, canceling out uh, those unit vectors. So we'll have r hat dot r hat. We're going to keep that piece, but this one, v hat dot r hat equals zero. Okay, so this piece will cancel. 
Um, now let's see what else we have here. We have a pre-solved value for our phi here, right? Because for path BC, which is the one that we're looking at right up here, phi is equal to pi over 2 here. So this is the phi, for cylindrical, just in between here. It's equal to pi over 2. So we're going to plug that in right away. Okay, so where are we at here? Uh, so phi equals pi over 2. Let's plug that in. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this guy, BC, and then we have 5R sine of pi over 2. Uh, and then uh, we are keeping this DR as well because we dotted um, this piece with this piece, and that's why we're keeping that. Okay. All right, so sine of pi over 2 is just 1, so we're going to get BC, oops, BC of, well actually let's do the bounds right away, so we're going to get the integral of um, 5R dr, because sine of pi over 2 equals 1. Okay, um, now let's find the bounds for this, because we're doing dr, so where are we going? Well for BC, where, where's our bottom? Okay, so bottom bound is at r equals 1, and then the top bound is at r equals 2. So bottom bound 1, top bound 2. Okay. A lot of people tend to confuse the bounds, so I think it's an important thing to kind of just note here. Just be really careful with those. Um, really make sure to follow your contour direction. So we're including that. The 1, and then our answer here, uh, I think it's 15 pi over, or no, sorry, 15 over 15 halves. Let me actually solve the guy out there. So 5 times 4, 2 squared, over 2, minus 5 times 1 over 2. So we get 5 times 3 over 2, so that's 15 halves for our answer here. So here's a piece, here's a piece, and here's a piece. Okay, so let's do our last one here. Okay, so same thing for DA. Uh, so we're looking at dA, so phi is equal to 0 at dA. We'll see that up here. So for dA, our phi is equal to 0. Um, and we are in the r hat direction, right? Because we're along the radius, uh, and it's moving in the r hat direction. So this it's a rotating coordinate system. Depending on that phi, it will change kind of where that, that r is pointing. So we, when we're taking a snapshot in time, note that it is rotating, but this is still along the r direction, so r hat. r hat, okay? Um, all right, so we have the same DL. So the setup here is going to be super similar. DA, uh, taking our F here, same thing, okay? Copy, paste, uh, and then we're plugging in our values here for phi. Um, I'm actually going to solve this one out before I plug in the value for phi. It's going to cancel it and make it zero, but I kind of want to show um, all the math just to show the bounds here. Um, so we're going to just plug in our phi last just to be able to show the math. Actually, no, I'm going to do it like this, right? Uh, okay, and then dr r hat. Okay, so which ones cancel here? So we're going to keep this, right? Hat dot r hat equals 1, and then r hat dot phi hat equals 0. Okay, so this piece will cancel, and then we're going to end up with uh, da, right? 5 r sine phi, um, and then dr, right? Because we're keeping this piece and this piece, and then just that r hat dot r hat equals 1. Okay, so it's looking really familiar, probably. Okay, integrating with respect to r, so we'll have 5 r squared over... Oh wait, sorry, our bounds, right? That's what we cared about. I'm going to pull out that sine of phi, because it's a constant here, and our phi is equal to 0, um, which is going to multiply the whole thing by 0, so you're like, why are we solving this? Um, but I think it's just, I just want to note the bounds really quick here. So for d to a, right, uh, we're looking at the direction, so the bottom bound for d is going to be, oops, sorry, bottom bound for d, oops. Bottom bound is at r equals 2, top bound is at r equals 1. So see the arrow direction? Bottom bound is at 2, top bound is at 1. So 2, 1. 
uh, 5 r dr. Uh, there's more, so 5 r squared over 2 from 1 to 2. So that's going to be multiplied by 0. And we plug in our v, so the answer for this piece is 0. Okay, so we did all of our sides. Uh, so the only thing that's left to do is to find the full uh, f dot dl and just sum them all together. So we have 1 minus 8 plus 15 over 2. Let's do this. So 1 minus 8 plus 15 over 2 plus 0. So that's going to be negative 7 plus 7.5 just for 15 over 2. Uh, and that's going to give us uh, 1 half for our answer. So let me just check that that's actually correct. And yeah, yep, we got 1 half. Okay, so we found part A. Next we're going to do, for the second video, we're going to do these two together, find this one, and then evaluate the curl.ds to find the flux through the surface, or the flux of the curl through the surface.